Example five, solve a multi-step problem. Running, the distance d in miles that a runner travels is given by the function d is equal to six times t, where t is the time in hours spent running. The runner plans to go for a 1.5 hour run. Graph the function and identify its domain and range. Solution, step one. Identify whether the problem specifies the domain or the range. You know the amount of time the runner plans to spend running. Because time is the independent variable, the domain is specified in this problem. The domain for the function is t is greater than or equal to 0 and t is less than or equal to 1.5. Alright, so determine to determine what is the independent variable, Go back to the equation. Distance is equal to 6 times t. That means that the distance is dependent upon whatever the time is. So time then is the independent variable. And they told you that the runner plans to go for a 1.5 hour run. That means he will run no more than 1.5 hours. So, so you know t has to be less than or equal to 1.5. So the range would be from 0 to 1.5. So once again, t is greater than or equal to 0, and t is less than or equal to 1.5. That would be your domain. Step 2. Graph the function. Make a table of values, then plot and connect the points. Well, we know we're looking at time in hours and distance in miles. We know that one value we're going to use for time is 1.5. Another value that we know we can use is 0. So time is going to be greater than 0, but less than 1.5. So we pick a couple numbers in between there. Here they chose 0.5, which basically means 30 minutes, and 1 means 1 hour. 0.5 as in a half an hour, and 1 is 1 hour. So now we take these values and we plug them into our equation. So when t is 0, 6 times t is 0. When 6 is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 we know is a half, I mean when t is 0 0.5, we know that 0 0.5 is a half, so we get 6 times 0 0.5, or 6 times a half, which is 3. When t is 1, we get 6 times 1, which is 6. And when t is 1.5, we get 6 times 1.5, which is 9. Okay, now that we determine our values, we're now ready to graph. Our input our output, another way of saying it, our range, excuse me, our domain, our range. All right, so here we go. X is 0, Y is 0. That's that point right there. X is 0.5, Y is 3. That's that point. X is 1, Y is 6. That's that point. And X is 1.5 and Y is 9. That's that point. Then we connect. Now notice when we connect, the graph is continuous. The graph is continuous. In other words, this point count, that point count, that point count, that point count, and every point in between also counts. Step three, identify the unspecified domain or range from the table or graph. You can see that the range of the function is going to be d is greater than or equal to zero and d is less than or equal to nine. You can also see that from your table. d is greater than or equal to zero, but at the same time, d is less than or equal to nine. You can see that to, uh, your domain, time is greater than or equal to zero, and at the same time, time will be less than 1.5 hours. Example six, solve a related problem. What if, what if, suppose the runner in example five and stud plans to run 12 miles. Graph the function and identify its domain and range. Solution, step one. Identify whether the problem specifies the domain or the range. You are given the distance that the runner plans to travel. Because distance is a dependent variable, as discussed earlier, the range is specified in this problem. The range of the function is d is greater than or equal to 0, and d is less than or equal to 12. 
because it said his plans to run 12 miles instead. All right, so once again, D at a minimum is zero, at a maximum it's 12. Step two, graph the function. To make a table, you can substitute D values, be sure to include zero and 12, into the function D is equal to 6T and solve for T. Okay, now once again, graph the function. To make a table, you can substitute D values. Be sure to include 0 and 12 into the function D is equal to 6 times T and solve for T. Well, here's what you want to do there. Since you're going to solve for T, it'll be easier to take the original equation and solve it for T. And then just plug in your D values. So, solving this for, uh, for D, I get D is equal to 6 times T. I mean, solving this for T, I get D is equal to 6 times T. I want to get the T by itself. So therefore, I'm going to divide both sides by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So I'm left with T is equal to D over 6. T is equal to D over 6. So now I'm going to take the D values, plug this into the equation, and that will help me find my T values. So for my D values, I know I'm going to include 0 and 12. And then pick a number in between. So a distance of 0, a distance of 12, a nice easy number to work with would be 6. All right, so here we go. So now when D is 0, I plug 0 in right there. Well, what's 0 divided by 6? 0 divided by 6 is 0. So time there is going to be 0. When D is 6, I get 6 in place of D. 6 divided by 6 is 1. And when D is 12, I get 12 divided by 6. And 12 divided by 6 is 2. So now I have my table. I have my domain and I have my range. Step 3. Identify the unspecified domain or range from the graph, from the table or the graph. You can see that the domain of the function is t is greater than or equal to 0 and t is less than or equal to 2. t is greater than or equal to 0 and t is less than or equal to 2. And also you can determine that from the table or from the graph. All right, and that concludes today's lesson.